we are live. Welcome, everybody, to uh, another episode of The Market Made Easy with the Maxwell Group. And today is a very special and interesting new episode. Um, it's our first mm -hmm. attempt at an Ask Us Anything. So we are here today with myself, Kellen Hoskins, Carissa Maxwell, and for her podcast slash video cast debut, Karen Fennell. Thanks for coming in, Karen. Karen is another one of the amazing agents on the Maxwell Group. So, we are taking your questions. Ask us anything real estate related, and we will be happy to do our very, very best to answer that. Um, pay no attention to me at this moment. I am simply loading up all, the, we've got live feeds going from like five different directions, so. Um, it's pretty brilliant, actually. I think it's I hope neat. it works it's out. very high tech in here. <laughs> I hope it works out. Um, yeah. So yeah, we are here and, and taking your questions today. So um, feel free to ask away. Looks like we've got a couple of comments. Um, bear with me, everybody, as I'm loading up all of these mm -hmm. separate live stream. Um, hey, Christian. Um, thanks for tuning in from Seattle. We appreciate you. Christian. Yay. It's been a while. Yeah. It's good to see you. Goodness. Yeah, well, and I mean, there were a couple of other people that couldn't actually um, tune in for this podcast live, and so they did drop a few questions um, that I have prepared if we need uh, need yeah, to I think start. We'll maybe prime the prime the pump a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so I had somebody um, ask me. Um, when they hit the contact agent button on Zillow, they think that they're going to be getting the listing agent. And they're frustrated because when they click that button, mm. they get an agent that may or may not know anything about that specific property. And, um, you know, they, this uh, person has an agent and um, they, they basically are saying, I just want to know the information about the property so that I don't bug my agent unless it's the right property for me. And um, so they asked me to kind of explain how that process works on Zillow because I think this is a common issue um, of the bait and switch where somebody clicks on contact agent and they, they think they're getting one person and they end up getting somebody totally different. Um, and they get frustrated or... Um, you know, they're, they're caught by surprise. So um, when you click on contact agent, you're actually going to get a premier agent, somebody who has purchased the right to get that phone call. And uh, Zillow works, uh, well, they've kind of changed their format over the years, but one of the things that they um, do is they, they give the premier agent the opportunity, the space, um, and you'll see a drop down with a few different agents on the side panel, and it'll be one of those three agents that you click on, um, or it'll go to whoever picks up the phone first. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they just recently um, started uh, basically saying, we're not gonna screen calls anymore. It's up to you to ask if they have an agent. Um, we get we get people calling in that think that they're gonna t talk to somebody in a different language. Um, so like, they'll be calling and start talking to you in, uh, in Spanish, Mandarin, and you're like, yeah, yeah I don't speak Mandarin. I don't speak <laughs> Mandarin, it's not yeah. gonna happen. So, um, so it is important for you to understand that you're not you're not probably not going to get the listing agent unless they've paid for that space for that uh, as well that that online space um, and so it is really important that you bug your agent um, yeah I was gonna say that's I yeah. think the biggest takeaway yeah. there is they're your agent that means they're they're acting on your behalf and yes. in your best interest bother them that's literally their job yeah is, I mean, it is, is for you to, to reach out to them for assistance with anything related to your real estate sale or purchase. Mm -hmm. I think the, the difficulty question. too is you have to, re people have to know that if they click that button and they get a different agent on the phone, now you're kind of dragging somebody else into the mix. And so if mm -hmm. you have an agent that you are happy with, you shouldn't feel like you're bugging them when you mm -hmm. have yeah. a question. And by clicking that button and getting a different agent that is neither the listing agent or your agent, mm -hmm. you now have another agent involved 
and things can get messy. So I yeah, always tell weird. people that I'm working with, please bug hmm, me. Bother me. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> well, and I, again, I think, if they're working on your behalf and in your best yeah, interest, it shouldn't be. You're a not bother. bugging us. Yes. So um, another question that I got was um, when I go into an open house mm. and um, I'm just curious to see that brand new model um, because I'm driving by and I don't want to bug my agent or I uh, just want to see the inside. I don't even have an agent. Um, what does that mean? Because I'll be honest, um, I get people that come into the open house and they, I ask them to sign in and yep. they give me a bogus email or a bogus phone number, um, which I mean, is understandable. You're worried about getting spammed. Um, but this person asked, well, if I go into an open house and that agent shows me the house, does that mean that that agent is owed a commission, even if I already have another agent. And um, I think that it's important that people understand um, that, it, that it depends on the situation. If you walk yeah. into a, a new build, a, a, a builder uh, open house, and or a you, model home in a, a new community, home. you know, That's you're right. driving by and, and you just want to stop in and mm -hmm. see, you know, they will ask you to sign in. They'll ask you to sign in. And if you register at one of these um, new communities, uh, what's going to happen, Karen? Well, if you register at a new community and you also have an agent that you've been working with and you go in there on your own without your agent and you sign in, your agent is then kind of just locked out of that transaction. Yeah. So I think it's important to... Mm -hmm. um, Always remember, if you have an agent that you're working with, mm -hmm. regardless of whether you call somebody on Zillow, go into a new community model home, or go into an open house that you just have to be driving by, if you have an agent and you're happy with your agent and your agent is working hard for you, I think it's important to always tell whoever is on the other side of whatever you're looking at mm -hmm. that you have an agent that you're working with. Sometimes I give clients extra business cards. Mm -hmm. They can say, this is my agent. Um, and you just make sure that you let people know that you're represented. Mm -hmm. But again, especially with those, with those new build communities, you can, you can have all the business cards for the agent who's been working for you True. for a while that you want. And if, if they are not with you, the first time you visit that community, mm -hmm. they can no longer represent you in the sale. And I've had clients go in and just say, I'm not going to sign in today. I have an agent I'm working with. I'm just here to look. I'll be back with my agent. Well, yeah. and actually some of the communities won't even let you walk through the models mm -hmm. unless you have an agent with you um, and or you choose to not have them represent you. So again, it's, it is a little complicated. And I think from the buyer standpoint, I think they get a little like, well, I just want to go look at this house. What is the big deal? And it is a big deal. Um, and especially if you have somebody who's been working hard for you, uh, just give them a courtesy call. Cause I bet you, I bet you hundred percent, they're going to stop what they're doing <laughs> and get there possible, get to yeah. that, and get there and get to that community to register, uh, you as, as their client. So, um, you know, I think, you, you know, it's always good to just give them a call and let them decide, Yeah, you know, absolutely. so yeah. Any questions coming in? No, we've Not got so some. Far. We've got some hellos. Um, hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for for tuning in. If you have any questions, feel free to to spout them out. And then uh, we've got Kurt, Jessica, and Sam also are, are tuned nice. in watching. So on various feeds. So uh, thank you guys for for yeah. tuning in. That's awesome. Um, share this video if maybe if you don't have a question, maybe somebody else does. We are happy to answer those. Um, I know mm -hmm. another question that we got offline was regarding HOAs. That that. Mm -hmm. um, that dirty three letter word <laughs> um, that, that people like to complain about sometimes. Um, we actually did an entire episode mm -hmm. devoted to HOAs, but I think it's still a, a good question to answer um, mm -hmm. regarding, you know, they, they're like, well, oh, we left the trash can out like for an hour after, after trash pickup. And we got a nasty gram from the HOA. Mm -hmm. Two things. Thing one, mm -hmm. when you're purchasing a home, Super important to learn about the HOA mm -hmm. that you are potentially moving into. 
Some of them have stricter standards than others. Some of them enforce their standards differently. Regardless, it's your responsibility as the homeowner to know the stipulations, rules, restrictions that are involved with living in that community. Unfortunately, it's not a situation where you can't say, I don't know. I didn't know a month later and, and have really anything re resembling recourse at all. So thing one, educate yourself. Your agent should be helping you with that. You should receive a copy of your CCNRs um, and your bylaws in the escrow period. Mm -hmm. If you don't receive that, you got a problem. <laughs> you've <laughs> got 10 somebody. days, you've got a 10 day standard inspection period in the state of Arizona. It's baked into our contract. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that inspection is getting a copy of the CCNRs for your community. And so it's really important for you to review that. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you just have a neighbor who sucks. <laughs> yes. And that's a real thing. Um, yes. I was communicating with a, with a friend of mine uh, yesterday who feels like their neighbor is just picking on them because there's this one vacant lot in their, in their neighborhood. The homes in that neighborhood don't have very big yards. And so a lot of the neighborhood dogs, you know, dog owners will walk their animals over there and mm -hmm. do their business. And for some reason, this neighbor has it in their head that this one person is responsible for all the dog poop that's in that lot. And actually, from, from what I understood, actually took it upon themselves to bag some of it up and stick it in their mailbox. Oh, <laughs> wow. Um, First of all, putting anything into a mailbox, if you are not a mail carrier, is a federal offense. Just a little so very don't passive do that aggressive. Thing. Thing. Very too. passive aggressive. <laughs> um, so my, my advice to that neighbor is to get a life. Um, mm -hmm. But if they can't get a life, you've got to find a way to, to, to get along, unfortunately. Sometimes that's just the way it is. You don't get to choose your neighbors unless you... You know, take it upon yourself to walk the neighborhood prior to purchasing a home, knock on the doors, and introduce yourself and see if there's anybody stupid or weird. Yeah, I Which mean, kind of in every neighborhood, I think. It's there's, possible. The Never world know. is full of stupid people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of questions out there. I think when you're buying a house or when you're selling a house. Um, let's see. What other questions have we gotten, Kellen? Oh, there were several, but they're on my phone, which is right there. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. I don't know that I have. I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to pull up a message on my watch because it's 2019, mm -hmm. and we can do things like that potentially. Mm -hmm. um, but 2019 are not. They're not showing up. Um, mm -hmm. So. Let's see here. I'm trying to trying to rack my own brain about what was what was the other question. There was there was at least one or two more. Mm -hmm. um, so we had the pre procuring cause question. So that was the open house question. Mm -hmm. We had the HOA question. Mm hmm. Hmm. Who's got a funny story? I don't. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm running out of. I'm running out of. Uh, <laughs> mental bandwidth on remembering the questions that are stored so very close, but so very far away. Well, I mean, we can talk about manufactured homes. I think that, um, there's a lot of questions around that. Uh, people, yeah. um, I get a lot of questions about, oh, I can't, I can't get a manufactured home. I don't want that. Um, mm -hmm. even though they want the, the price point that would allow for a manufactured home versus, and get them a lot more for their money versus a stick built house and they're you know they're stuck in you know a thousand to 1100 square feet versus manufactured yeah. it really does open up um, a lot more options for for them and um, I think that there are certain things that a lot of uh, people maybe not know about manufactured homes so um, you know lending on a double wide is significantly easier than a single wide um, so that is something to consider always when you're talking about manufactured housing you're, you're generally talking about double wides um, and the age of the home 
Yeah, the age of the factory. of of the of the manufactured home is really important as well. So when you're talking to uh, an agent about looking for manufactured homes, um, you know, if you are willing to look at something like that, it will really it will actually open up your options. And you also want to make sure that that manufactured home has not been twice moved. So what that means is that it came from the manufacturer and was set on a piece of property and then it was sold again and moved to another location from the original set. And it, if it's been twice moved, then uh, traditional financing does not apply mm -hmm. in most cases. There is a company out there actually called 21st Mortgage out of Tennessee that will actually lend on that, but it kind of looks more like private money. Um, and it's, uh, it starts at 8% and goes all the way up to 15%. So yeah, there's um, some hard money lenders out there, yeah, you know, yeah. who are who are running in the, yeah, anywhere between eight to mm -hmm. twenty-two percent range right now, which yeah, it's expensive money, but for some people, you know, in depending on your situation, it, it may be the right option for you. Um, yeah. we have a couple of questions coming. Oh, Yay. cool. Yay. So first question is: Is it even worth looking for real estate online, or is it usually too late? were not worthwhile and I will say at least from my standpoint um, it is very worth it to be looking at real estate online however some of the main sources that people think of when they think of online real estate um, such as you know your your big ones Zillow and truly and realtor.com mm -hmm. um, the information is often out of date and that can be that can be a problem I know that um, I've had phone calls on my own listings as far out as 90 plus days after they closed mm -hmm. inquiring about availability. And those are, those are homes that are shown as closed. I've told Zillow that they were closed and for some reason they still show as active. Mm -hmm. Well, and I mean, that could be because of the syndication that yeah. it is running in the, in the background that maybe didn't get the memo. Yeah. Something, something got something plugged happened. up in the background. Um, a lot, you know, most good real estate agents have their own website and I would probably recommend that if you are working with an agent that you would, you would reach out to them and see what that website is, if they have it or not. Uh, because that will typically be a more accurate source of info. Typically, an agent's website comes right from their local MLS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's really more updated and more there's accurate. No, there's no six degrees of separation no lag time. between the MLS and the end user. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's, that's a pretty good answer, I think. That's my, that's my thought. And call on your it. agent. And call your agent. Um, but that's my thoughts on it. If, well, and I think there are some people that would think that they're already shopped out, like that somehow if the pocket listing existed, it was shared with the brokerage that then, you know, it must have been seen by all of the people and somehow, you know, mm -hmm. it, I, I personally think that people could see it like that, but um, that's more the case in commercial um, not yeah. necessarily residential, just because everything is happening so quickly in residential, um, and the turnarounds and the uh, just the ability to see something when it goes live quickly um, is there online, and it is the first place people do go to when they're when they're looking for a home. I mean, that's how people start the buying process most of the time is they look online, absolutely, and then they call the agent that they have been thinking about in their head. Mm -hmm. for two years because they've been seeing indirect marketing from them or they know them personally or you know their their brother or something like that so i mean i think it is a, a useful tool to use um to get some good ideas about what you're looking to buy but i think sometimes it's really hard to paint a picture of, of what you really want unless you're actually there looking at yeah. the area and really helping uh, us helping you hone in on an area that you actually like mm -hmm. in 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 Prescott in in the Stone Verde Valley in these areas yeah. um so yeah i think it's it's a great it's, resource the internet is yeah. a, is is a great resource you just have to understand that sometimes the information's not perfect and there still is in my not mm -hmm. so humble and probably very biased opinion no real substitution at this point in the game for 
human beings helping you get through that process. Yeah, it just gives you a, a more well-rounded picture. Yeah. Of of the area and what you're buying, and give you the you know all of the information you need to know. So. Yeah, and then another question. Um, it says not all manufactured homes are trailers, right? Correct. Correct. In Correct. fact, most manufactured homes aren't trailers. They are brought in on trailers most of the time, but they are not, in fact, trailers themselves. Um, a, the definition of a trailer is something that can be hooked up to a vehicle at a moment's notice and moved. Um, and for that, in that very strict definition of that term, um, no, most uh, manufactured homes, um, even the ones that are slightly less attractive to the eye, are not actually trailers. Mm -hmm. um, Moving on to our next question, what is the difference between using a realtor and using Zillow? Well, Zillow is not a realtor. Right. Zillow is just a source of information. So they may be referring to the iBuy program, which is a way to um, get a offer that is going to be one of the like we buy ugly houses offers. Yeah, okay. it's a less competitive. It's yeah. a oh man, I need to move right now. Right now, you know, maybe a, a job change or a family situation change has occurred, and we have to move and we have to do it quickly. There are some um, mm -hmm. there are iBuyer platforms out there that that can help you with that, but just know that you're not going to get nearly what you want for your home. Mm -mm. It's it's this it's a fire sale. Well, they're just running, they're running analytics yeah. and they're running numbers and they're basically putting it out there to investors to make a, a percentage on their money Yeah. by buying the house and then reselling it or renting it or, I mean, it's going to become a part of somebody else's portfolio. Absolutely. And they're not looking at it for their personal residence 99.999% of the time. So you're, you're, it's just a different profile. It's like selling your Rolex to a pawn shop. Well, and going back to the original question, asking about a realtor, I mean, I think a realtor is going to work for you. They're going to do the searching for you. They're going to take you out to look at the houses. Even if you're in a hurry, if you find somebody in your area that you can work with, that you feel good about, they're going to help you and they're going to protect your negotiation power and they're going to make sure everything goes down correctly and they're going to make sure that, mm -hmm. you know, you are protected throughout the sale versus uh, an I buy type of program. Maybe you don't get all that they're in it for assistance them. They're not and in help it for and protection you. and right. Zillow is a really great tool to help you get to the next step. Yeah. It's a really good first step in the direction of home ownership. Um, and so there is a place for Zillow. It's just that it really helps you connect with people like us or like the, you know, the people that you, that you need to be connected with. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can see why somebody would ask that because, they're, well, because, they're correlated. Yeah, yeah. The, the, that correlation is there, and it's undeniable. People think real estate; they think Zillow. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think earlier, I think Kellen said that you can't, you can't get past the human interaction, the human touch. You're always going to get better service and closer to what you want, and finding what you need and help with a human with the human touch. Yeah. Right, just in expertise mm -hmm. in that specific area. In the area, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. You know how when you're trying to check out produce at a self-checkout and it's the most annoying and frustrating oh, yeah. thing in the entire world? Now imagine those tomatoes are your house. The largest investment you've ever make, made or are likely to make. Yeah. You're putting that through self-checkout. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you trust you? Hope you find the right barcode. <laughs> like, seriously, do you trust you to self-check out the largest investment you'll ever make? See, and I honestly think that there is a percentage of people out there that will choose that. And that's okay. You know, but we're there for the... Absolutely. We're there for the other percentage of people. Outliers. Yeah. We're there for the people that really need an expert. Somebody who's going to really help them get the most for their house, we're going to help them make sure that they feel super comfortable when they buy that house. They feel really good about it when they move in and they don't regret it later. You know, it's really important. No regrets. No, no regrets. regrets. No regrets. Okay, another question. Um, what home improvements are the most worthwhile when trying to add value to a home before selling it? Ooh, good question. Kitchen and bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> not landscaping. I think everybody thinks curb yeah. appeal. Yeah. Like you want it to look nice and clean and you fresh, do. but you can't dump a bunch of money into landscaping no. right before you sell because 
that's subjective and you're probably not going to get it back. Yeah, no, yeah. no. Mm-hmm. Kitchen and bathrooms are, the, are the biggest and most important investments you can make, but you still have to be careful because a lot of... You can't of, go overboard. Can't go overboard. And once you start knocking things down, once you start pulling cabinets down, once you start doing all of that, it's a big can of worms. Can so, be. It, yeah, it is. So um, really need to get an opinion from a realtor in your area that can help you, uh, you know, by looking at the actual kitchen, the actual bathroom, the actual house, and really help you determine what needs to be done and what really you shouldn't put money into. Yeah, and what other, you know, because it, it all comes down to comparing your home to mm-hmm. the other homes that have sold. And if every home has granite countertops and you have marble, laminate, yeah. then laminate, your yeah. marble countertops don't really, you're not going to get that money back. Oh, right. And yeah. if, you ha- if everyone has granite and you have laminate, then you can't expect to sell for the same price as everyone who has granite. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to get all the money back out of super high-end updates so i i would recommend for those um if you're planning on staying in a home for a really long time and you just really want it that's great it will add value to your home but just don't expect to get every dollar back out of it yeah no it's really important that you have somebody kind of uh evaluate uh the market and make sure that you're not putting money in that you won't get back or we can't promise you're going to get back so, you know, we'd, we'd rather price it to sell. I think flooring comes up a lot too. Yep. Flooring. Well, should I shampoo yeah. my carpets or should I replace them? And that is so on an, on a individual basis, case by case, case, by case. um, you know, that is one of the most common questions we get, but sometimes replacing the carpet is necessary, but you'd be amazed mm-hmm. what these carpet cleaners can do. I really like yeah. Simply Clean, by the way, here in town is fantastic. Simply Clean. Uh, big fan of them right now. They just did mine, and I was really happy, and they were re- really well-priced. So just so you guys know, I'm plugging them today. It's great. <laughs> so. Not a sponsor, but <laughs> no super sponsor. great company to, to work with. <laughs> they were really great. We were Very professional. Um, Christian, um, our, our friend up in the Seattle area, has, has posed a couple of I would say comments more than more than they are questions, but um, mm-hmm. I feel it's important to respond to him as well. Um, but yeah, Zillow is a great resource. That's he says Zillow is a great resource for mm-hmm. facts about a property when they are correct, um, uh, but does nothing to help a buyer or seller navigate a very complicated process. Call us for that. Um, right. Well, and nicely you, done. You, we, I mean, a lot of these photos are so deceiving, and that's yeah. actually we, it, wide has, angles, creative. Oh my editing. goodness. That's our job as real estate agents. We're to market properties is to get you in the door. Yeah. Okay. We shop That's with our eyes. That's the whole point of making those room, rooms look so big and to take angles a certain way. But you know what? Those pictures sometimes take an angle that is, does not show you that the back uh, the backyard looks right into somebody else's living room, or that it's right next to a busy street. Um, and these, these things a are sewage treatment plant. right topography. <laughs> like what if it's like, like your driveway is yeah. like going down a sledding hill. So, you know, you really do need perspective on that because that one could be priced very well, but it's maybe not the best resale or maybe you don't care, um, because it's a summer home. So it doesn't matter. And so there's so many things that go into that and it's a really good conversation to have, um, and the way to start that is by starting that search and saying, I really like that house. Great. Let's Let talk me about call that house. my agent. Yeah. Yes. So I think we've got time for about one more. We have one more that came in through Prescott E-News. Mm-hmm. Um, and a huge thanks to them for, for helping us host this, uh, mm-hmm. this program week after week. Um, but uh, this one's a, a fun one. Um, for first-time home buyers, is it better to try to just buy a fixer-upper? Or to try to buy the house that they'll live in forever, or at least for a long time. Mm. That's a loaded question. A I, I actually loaded have question. a client who's right now sort of um, what I would say is like chasing a price point. And yeah. so sometimes when you're chasing a price point, you end up with a home that needs some work. And so I think people don't think about the fact that you might get a house for I'm just going to throw out a number two twenty five. But you might have to put, you know, twenty-five or thirty-five thousand dollars into that home to fix it up and bring it up to date and 
paint it and whatever you want to do to it. So you're going to end up spending somewhere around two hundred forty, two hundred fifty, two hundred sixty thousand dollars. But you're, but I think so. If people think about a fixer upper, it could be that you might be able to take the money that you would put into fixing up a house and put it towards buying a house that's a slightly higher price that doesn't require that work. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's I the think same it, dollar spent. Yeah, it comes it's just to, how you think about it. It comes down to availability of capital mm -hmm. um, at the time of purchase. It yep. comes down to your life stage. You know, I met first-time home buyers that were retiring. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the first time they purchased a home was at retirement. They had rented. They had lived in in condos and things mm -hmm. like that up until the until the point where they were ready to retire, and they wanted to purchase a house to do that in. Mm -hmm. So it really, I mean, it's a loaded question is, is exactly right because there is no one answer to that question because it's really going to depend on who the buyer is and, and where they're at in their circumstances. I, I think it also depends on where interest rates are because yeah. you know, that will affect your payment. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you're looking at that scenario that Karen was talking about, um, and you're thinking about, you know, what you really want to spend what versus, you know, what your payment needs to be. That's usually what buyers are really concerned yeah. about is after their insurance and taxes and, you know, the, the actual cost mm -hmm. of, um, the monthly payment, you know, the monthly, what is their going, what's their outgoing going to be? Mm -hmm. And do you have in the foreseeable future cash coming in to work on that house? Yes. You know, do you, ha are you handy? Are you going to have yeah, to go? Yeah, do you have the time, funds, or yeah. ability to ability. make the repairs that you want to make yeah. to bring it to the point that it's the house that you love to live in? Right. I think some people have this really great idea of what they want this house to look like mm -hmm. and no way to get there. Um, and, you know, there are actual uh, loan programs that... Uh, improvement loans that are really great. So you should discuss that with your lender because I think you can get there um, and the interest rate attached to it is actually, you know, pretty low. Yeah, it's, um, it's very competitive. Yeah, and the time and the money that you'll end up saving by hiring a contractor through that program that might work for you better than just, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, trying to get in as low as you can. Um, and yeah, I think... Everybody that says they're going to live in their house forever end up usually selling. It's on average, it's five years. So keep that in mind too, because yeah. your life could change. And so your plans likely will change. And so it's good to kind of keep that in mind when you're purchasing a house, because you probably need to just plan on the next five years. And yeah. then if, and then of course, if you stay great, then then make the, and do more. Then do or, more. I mean, you should yeah. be. You should really. You should be constantly and continuously updating your home in yeah. some way, shape, or form or another. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are some people that never update their house. There are. Mm -hmm. I you just guys moved just into sold one. Of them. <laughs> you guys. Well, I was going to say you just moved into one that hadn't been updated in a very long time, and um, oh. we, you and Karen, had a listing over in um, mm -hmm. Emerald Diana. Hills. Mm -hmm. Yep that had the most luscious yep. bright orange shag oh. carpet that I've ever seen in my entire mm. life. It was, it was rust phenomenal. colored. It was rust. Mm. Rust. It was rust. Mm. Yes. 1960s oh, yeah. rust. Oh, it was so fantastic. I, I walked yeah. in there and I was just like, <laughs> it had, <laughs> whoa. It, had one of it those, was a couple of blue rooms too. Were yeah. Blue carpet okay. rooms. And it had one of those hampers that in the bathroom. Like built in? But mm -hmm. the, yeah, the built in hamper. Do you remember mm -hmm. those? Those were cool. It was fun. So, yeah. But guess what? We, we got it sold. It. sold. That's right. <laughs> and that is all that matters. And so, in closing, we will answer the one last question that Paul Fennell mm, um, Paul asked Fennell. us. And thank you for joining in, Paul Fennell. Um, and I think it's a fantastic way to end our time together here today. And he is asking, what is the best way to get in touch with the Maxwell Group. What a fantastic question. Oh, that is a good so, question. Oh. Um, if you would like to get a hold of Karen Fennell, you can call her at... 928-499-2878. If you would like to get a hold of Carissa Maxwell, you can get a hold of her at... 928-202-2654. Best way is to text me 
If you leave me a voicemail, I will return your call. But if you need to get me immediately, that's the best way. And if you would like to contact me, Kellen Hoskins, you can get me at 928-910-5954. And you can browse all of our listings and the entire Prescott area and Sedona area MLS at maxwellgrouprealestate.com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> it's in stereo. All right. Well, thank you, everybody who tuned in. Yes. There's too many cameras for me to count at this point. Thanks. Um, and um, yeah, this was fun. <laughs> we'll do it again probably in a few months. So um, store up some questions for us. Um, and until next week, I am Kellen Hoskins with Carissa Maxwell and Karen Fennell. We hope you're having a lovely day and we'll see you next week. Bye.